Dear colleagues, this patient is having cataract with small people and I have to do the surgery under topical anesthesia because the patient is too apprehensive to take peribulbar injection. This is an unedited recording, so you are not going to miss anything. By this time, the incisions have been made. And now, I am going to stain the anterior capsule of the cataractus lens with tripan blue dye underneath this air bubble. And here goes the tripan blue dye. And now, little bit of adrenaline is being injected. Not little bit, a lot of adrenaline has been injected, but the people didn't dilate much. You can see little bit of dilatation superiorly, but it is not enough. So we have to use some people expansion device. And the people expansion device which I like very much is BX people expander. It's a versatile, very slender, very user friendly people expansion device. And here is the BX people expander. It is in a nice house. Just inject viscoelastic substance over the house. Take the recommended 23 gauze crocodile forceps which opens vertically and introduce the pehex in the anterior chamber as you see that the whole thing has gone inside you can tuck the leading flange at on go and now I'm going through the side port I'm going through the right side port and I'm holding onto the flange at 12 o'clock and tucking this gently underneath the iris like this. Now I'm going through the left side port. This is an unedited recording and you can make out how quickly you can do it once you have mastered the technique. Here it is. We are done. By this time what has happened is the anterior capsule has been injured. By the forceps or by the flange somehow it has been torn but it doesn't matter because anyway we are going to remove this portion of the anterior capsule. So I take a uterator forceps, hold this torn part of the capsule and convert this into a nice rexis. That's it. So this is a continuous carpilinear capsular axis of about 5.5 millimeter diameter because the pupil has expanded up to say 6 millimeter or 5.5 millimeter. Hydrodissection is done. We must be very careful during hydrodissection because the pupil is small there should not be blow out rupture of the posterior capsule. We should not inject a lot of fluid underneath the anterior capsular rim. The nucleus is rotated and now is the time to introduce the tip of the FACO handpiece. See the patient is constantly moving his eye. Topical anesthesia and BHEX people expansion device or any other people expansion device in that matter is possible because eyelids doesn't have 
pain sensation. It is the ciliary body that has the pain sensation. So if you touch the iris, the patient is not going to feel pain. Only because of anterior chamber fluctuations and if the sensory nerves on the ciliary body is stimulated, then you comprehend pain, otherwise not. This is the last nuclear fragment, FICO power, FICO energy, ultrasonic energy used in this case is 55%, flow rate is 40 ml per minute and vacuum is 400 ml of mercury. See the patient is constantly moving his eye in spite of repeated instruction. Viscoelastic substance has been injected into the anterior chamber. Now I am taking the bimanual irrigation aspiration, doing some hydro dissection actually, and now I am removing the visco, uh, removing the cortical matter. The irrigation is through the right side port, and aspiration through the left. Now I have to change my hands. Now irrigation is from the left and aspiration from the right. Here I see that I am catching the iris and I could not remove the cortex nicely, the portion which is underneath the iris. So inject some more viscoelastic substance and I have asked for a 23 gauze Simcoe, here it is. And I go underneath the iris, gently hold the cortical matter and remove it. That's it. So the cortex is nicely removed. Posterior capsule looks clean. So we can implant an intraocular lens now. Viscoelastic substance is injected and now in this case a monofocal hydrophobic acrylic intraocular lens is being implanted. The cartridge is a B cartridge and I'm enlarging the main incision a little bit by say about 0.1 or 0.2 millimeter. So the incision which was 2.8 millimeter is now 2.9 or 3.0 millimeter. Now here is the intraocular lens. Specifically this is acreole from eye care. And now the lens is placed in the capsular bag. Just check whether it is in the capsular bag or not. Retract the iris and retract the anterior capsular rim. If you can touch the anterior capsular rim, then the lens is in the back. And now I am pulling out the B hex ring. First I untuck and then hold superiorly and gently remove it like this. <coughs> so this is a very user friendly device. You can easily introduce this and easily remove this. The trick is the 23 gauze crocodile forceps. It makes application and removal of B hex is really simple. F earlier days there was manipulated and on could find it cumbersome. I myself found it cumbersome with manipulators but now with this 23 gauze crocodile forceps it is really easy 
it is cheaper than other people expanders it can go through 1.8 or even 1.5 millimeter incision now thoroughly the viscoelastic substance which was used for implantation of intraocular lens is being removed and thorough removal of viscoelastic substance is mandatory because if you don't remove the viscoelastic substance nicely, the patient will have raised intraocular pressure, patient will have steamy corneal edema, patient may have pain in the night, and next day the patient may express a lot of grief to you. So to avoid that, to see the happy face of the patient next day, please clean the viscoelastic substance nicely. Now hydrate the side ports and form the antechamber with BSS and conclude the case. Thank you very much for watching. Dear colleagues, please increase your skill, develop your skill to such an extent that you can take up all challenging cases. My wish is to develop you, to uplift you. Thank you very much.